video will be going over IRS Form 8944, Prepare E-File Hardship Waiver Request. If you're a taxpayer, uh, your tax return preparer usually will be required to file tax returns electronically according to the Internal Revenue Code if they expect to file tax returns for at least 11 or more taxpayers during a ca calendar year. Uh, this is known as a specified tax return preparer. And the re Internal Revenue Code requires specified tax return preparers to either file electronically or to use IRS Form 8944 to request an undue hardship waiver from the Internal Revenue Code requirement on electronic tax returns. So by walking through this form, we'll better understand if this happens to your tax return preparer. The IRS defines covered returns as any tax return for individuals, estates, or trusts. A waiver is not needed for any other return that is not accepted electronically by the IRS or if the IRS has instructed certain taxpayers not to file electronically. If you're a tax return preparer and the covered returns you are preparing for a taxpayer meet the require criteria for an administrative exemption, then you should not use IRS Form 8944. Instead, you should use Form 8948. 8948 is the tax return preparer's explanation for not filing electronically. We'll go over this form line by line. In line one, you'll see the calendar year for which uh, the hardship waiver is being requested. And then you will see boxes for either original or reconsideration. An original submission is the first request for a hardship waiver for the calendar year. And a reconsideration is when the tax return preparer is resubmitting with additional information to the IRS that the preparer feels may overturn their previous position. In line two, you'll complete the tax return preparer's name, street address, city, state, and zip code. In box three is the preparer's tax identification number. This is an eight-digit PTIN that every tax return preparer has. Line four is the telephone number. Line five asks whether the return preparer is applying for a waiver because they are a preparer in a firm that reasonably expects to file 11 or more covered returns in the calendar year. If yes, then you'll see the firm's name and employer identification number in box five. If no, then those can remain blank. In line six, these are the fields for the box or boxes uh, annotating the form or forms for which the waiver is requested. So in column one, the tax return preparer will enter the number of returns filed in the calendar year previous to the calendar year for which the waiver request is submitted. In column two, that is the number of returns reasonably expected to file in the current calendar year. Column three asks whether or not professional tax preparation software will be used to return the tax, prepare the tax returns. And then column four is if the return preparer answered yes to question five, um, asking about being a specified tax return preparer, then 
this requests uh, the number of returns that the entire firm reasonably expects to file in the, in the calendar year. So line 6A is for individuals uh, filing form 1040, 1040 NR or 1040 SR. And then line 6B is for estates and trusts filing form 1041. In line seven, uh, there are uh, uh, four different possible reasons for a hardship waiver. Uh, 7A, if the tax return preparer has filed for bankruptcy, then he or she must attach court documentation to support this. 7B, economic reasons. If that's the case, then they should complete lines eight and nine. If there is a presidential uh, de uh, federally declared disaster area, then line nine uh, needs to be completed. And then uh, 7D is for other uh, reasons. And the prepar preparer must also complete line nine. So in line eight, uh, for economic hardships, the tax return preparer should enter annual net income or the average return preparation fees generated by his or her activities. Additionally, they must obtain two different cost estimates uh, from third parties uh, to obtain additional hardware, software, connectivity, or any other services required to e-file uh, client returns and uh, the, those estimates must be attached to the form 8944. So if you are claiming an economic hardship, your waiver will be denied unless you check 7B and you complete line 8 and then line 9. For line 9, if you checked box 7B, 7C, or 7D, then this is the space where you uh, provide a written narrative to explain the hardship or identify the disaster for which the waiver request is based. At the bottom is the signature of the applicant title and date. The IRS requests tax return preparers to mail the completed form 8944 and any required attachments to the IRS 310 Lowell Street L-O-W-E-L-L -L -L, stop 983 Andover Massachusetts 01810 and tax return preparers should allow the IRS four to six weeks to receive notification. If your waiver is approved, you should document your waiver reference number and approval letter date on line two of your 8948. And this should be done for each covered return that you file on paper. If the waiver is denied, then you must file a completed, properly completed form 8948 with any paper return that you prepare and file. As always, you can call the IRS for step-by-step -step guidance. Uh, we've also written an article about this form. You can check it out on our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com. Uh, type in IRS form 8944 in the search bar, and our article should show up. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter on our website. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you have questions or comments, please post them in the comments section. Thank you very much.